<laughs> Hello guys, this is Felix from Fatsu and I will give you a short rundown about the company and about our new system that will hit the US market by the end of this year. So Fatsu is a quite a new brand on the market. We will hit the roads with our system by the end of this year and uh, further models will come later on. So um, we are not completely new to the bike world. We sold our systems now for the last two and a half years in Europe and we are um, expanding very fast. So when we started Fatsua it was in 2013 uh, when our founder was inventing the lightest mid-motor system that's currently uh, uh, available on the market. He thought about getting uh, or creating a system that works in a different way that the common systems did in 2013. In 2013 there was a movement towards motors that had so much torque that they would bend frames, that they would weight more than 40 pounds. And he just said, no, I don't want to go in that direction, I want to go in the direction that common bikes do. So what um, he said, we shrink everything. We shrink the battery, we shrink the motor, and therefore we get a light white bike which has the, uh, the whole weight of the system centered so the bike is more stable and therefore we get a also more natural bike riding experience. So this is a logo bike, a uh, beautiful commuting bike which is the very first model um, that we revealed one and a half years ago with a logo and with 18 kilograms is pretty lightweight for an e-bike and especially for commuting area. It's uh, perfectly equipped with great specs. So, as you see, the, the down tube has a hidden <laughs> drive pack, we call it, motor unit in it, which consists of the motor and the battery. It's all in one pack. So from the outside you just see the radiator here and you would not tell or you could not tell it's an e-bike on first sight so but when you unplug the system here you see that it's an e-bike so battery uh, battery is here <laughs> with 250 watt hours and the motor with 250 watt and 400 watt in peak under this cap, you have a uh, mini USB uh, mo yeah, mold that can um, use can be used to um, to learn everything about the uh, health of your system, the health of the battery, and you see how much or how far you've gone so far with your system. And in any service case, it also tells you if there is a broken or if there is a problem and or what you should do with that. I just want to show you. The other part that we are providing, it's that um, bottom bracket that transmits, uh, transmissions the power of the motor through an uh, angle gear to the cranks. So you will get 60 newton meters of torque at the cranks. Um, you will have a very sensitive support as we have a both side torque measurement and also cadence measurement at the same time. Now this makes it very sensitive and you only get the support when you use both cranks to spin. This makes it also very safe, so when you, whenever you have just one leg or one foot on the pedals, uh, you will get no support. So example, a good example would be if you stop at a stoplight, the bike would not push you forward as you set the foot on the ground. So what you can see here is the motor and these planetary gears that are um, transporting the power of the motor f to that clutch, I will come to that uh, in a second, to that female polygon part which transmissions the power of the motor to that male polygon part and you will have the uh, angle gear here and a ratchet. 
so you don't have a fixie. Yeah. All the data, the torque measurement and also the cadence uh, uh, thing here, measures will be transported via that connector to here to the to the motor unit and will be calculated together and uh, here so that you will always get the perfect support and still feels natural so it depends on the cadence and the torque and also on the value that the speed sensor senses on how much support you will get it's a very tricky and complicated thing to develop so we needed around two years just for that little part that's the battery it weights 1.4 kilograms which is roughly around uh, it's under three pound so therefore as heavy as a drinking bottle approximately so if in case you would need an extra battery which is not really necessary for a bike like that you can carry that around in your backpack or in a bottle holder as you wish <laughs> normally you would come around 60 kilometers in the flat with one battery charging uh, if you charge or with 100 percent battery you would go for 60 kilometers in the highest support mode with an average speed of 24.9 kilometers per hour so in speaking in meters of altitude which might be a more interesting for all these sportive riders out there it would mean 1300 meters of altitude with a road bike and 800 meters of altitude with a mountain bike so this is pretty much if you consider it's just if in case you need them or you in case you use the system the most what you have to consider is <laughs> so whenever you go above the legal speed limit you <laughs> You, <laughs> you don't need any support from the, um, from the motor and therefore you don't need any capacity of the battery. So you save capacity and you also don't have any drag by the motor. So you don't feel any resistance and uh, it feels like you're riding a traditional normal common bike. Road cyclists in, in particular are riding most of the time Above the speed limit so they get the support mostly when they go uphill or when they have wind coming from ahead that makes it uh, an optional system which you won't need when you go faster than the legal speed limit uh, another exciting thing I just uh, wanted to tell you is we are now going to have our down tube cover which is basically an empty alloy tube which has the same measurements as the system um, we sell it for a very cheap price and you can easily convert your e-bike with a Fatsua system to a common bike and you gain a little extra storage that you can use for your beverages food uh, tube whatever you can you want to carry with you around it's optional so you won't also feel no drag no breaking of the motor um, but you can yeah you can go around with that so this is maybe for interesting for all of you who are not knowing in what kind of bike you should invest if you go for a traditional bike or if you should go with an e-bike invest in a proper e-bike um, that you can use as a normal bike if you wish very interesting gravel bike that the guys over from the Hunt Wheels launched recently. It will be available uh, in the next few months and um, will come in a few different um, design options. Then we have this Bulls entry-level e-road bike, which is a perfect example for a bike that will cost roughly around uh, three to four thousand uh, dollar and you can um, even, even go into um, yeah, more sophisticated specs and then we'll have an uh, end price of 8000. Bulls is also having a, a very light white fully which you can use for an all mountain terror and um, several, several bikes for commuting purposes. Then we have the cube bike over here 
This bike is very interesting in case you are looking for some history milestones. <laughs> It was the very first e-road bike that was hitting the market in a serial production manner. So in July 2017, Cube launched that bike and officially started the category e-road bike. So we are, we are very proud to be in that bike and we are still the major system used in the whole category e-road bike. What we have over here is an example for an uh, is an example for a mountain bike, a hardtail, where you also have fullies, but uh, fullies with an all mountain purpose and for enduro purpose with Lapierre as well. Here, Fantic. Fantic was one of the partners that showed their bike for the first time in the US and they got perfect, um, uh, perfectly good responses for for that bike. This will be available very soon, so by the end of this year this thing will be seen on many roads. What's the website? It's fatsua, F -A -Z -U -A .com. Perfect. Great. Thanks for your time. Thank you. I appreciate it.